Hello, I'm David Slakes, and in this video, I will be talking about business rules. Business rules allow you to add validation to your input data. At this moment, there are already a number of business rules active in my application. Let me show you an example. When I create a new customer, I notice that both first and last name are required fields. This has been determined by Vidiano because the database does not allow null values for their respective columns. Another example of a business rule is the email attribute on my customer. When I enter an invalid email address and I press save, Vidiano will prompt me with an error message. Vidiano has determined that this attribute needs to contain a valid email address simply because the column name contains the word email. Vidiano recognizes a number of keywords that will trigger it to apply additional application logic. You can see which business rules were applied to your attributes when you navigate to their metadata. Let's do that now. I click my management and search for my customer persistent object. On the attributes query, you will see a column called rules. These rules indicate which business rules are active on that particular attribute. I can also create my own business rules. A good example for a business rule is a product number. When I go back to my products, I notice that all the product numbers start with two capital letters, a dash, followed by a series of numbers and letters. Let's say that I want to make sure that all product numbers will be in the same format. First, I will need to create a business rule, and there are two ways to do this. The first way is by clicking Management and opening the Business Rules query from the Service menu. You can already see a list of built-in business rules, such as Required, Not Empty, or Is Valid Email. I want to add my own business rule, so I click the New action, And at this moment, I am able to write my code using JavaScript. It is important to notice that this code will be executed on the server side, as is indicated here. If this code would be executed on the client side, it will allow someone to bypass this business rule, which is something we want to avoid. Let's call this business rule is valid code. And then add the JavaScript code. This code uses a regular expression to check the value and return a message if it doesn't match. The zero between curly brackets at the beginning of the message will be replaced with the label of the attribute to which I will apply this business rule. This allows you to reuse the same rule across multiple attributes and always get the correct error message. Now I am going to apply this business rule to the product number attribute. I save my business rule and I open my product persistent object. I then open the product number attribute and enter edit mode. I then edit the rules field and append is valid code. The name of my business rule. Note that multiple business roles are separated by semicolons. I save my changes and go back to the products query. I now create a new product and enter an invalid product number. I click Save and my application prompts me with the error message from my business rule. As I said earlier, there are two ways to add business rules to my application. The way you just watched is by using in-application JavaScript code. The other way is by adding C-sharp code to my project. Let me show you where you can do this. In Visual Studio, underneath the service folder in my project, 
there is a file which name ends with business rules. I open this file where I will find an example on how I would write a business rule using C Sharp. In the end, both JavaScript and C Sharp will be able to provide the exact same result, so it is up to you which one of them you prefer. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching.